Stop wasting your money on slow and accurate and expensive Google Maps scrapers like D7 Lead Finder and Outscraper. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how you can scrape unlimited businesses off Google Maps that actually match your ICP in seconds for just a dollar for every 8,800 businesses. And you're going to want to watch till the end because I've never seen anyone use this process before. You'll also learn how to never waste a penny enriching leads you already enriched previously and how I automate the entire local list building process for my clients so I can literally just hit scrape and have a campaign ready lead list polished and ready to go out the other end. Forewarning, this is not some cookie cutter video. I'm going to show you the entire process top to bottom and I'm going to explain every minute detail. So grab a coffee, grab a donut and buckle up because... I really want to get into the nitty gritties. If you want to skip around, use the timestamps below, but without further ado, let's dive into this initial table. So this is actually something that's being processed through three tables and it's really not costing like any clay credits whatsoever. This is all run through Serper Dev, which if you're familiar with it, pause and go crazy. But if you're not, I'm going to show you how you, to turn Serper Dev into a powerhouse Google Maps scraper that gives you all the data you need in seconds and at a way higher accuracy without any recurring software fees. Thank God, because we don't need another subscription. It's becoming uh, a rent to live world. Uh, shout out to anyone that is familiar with uh, Robert Breedlove's uh, thesis on that. So what do we have here? We've got a list of 4,350 businesses that was able to source for about 50 cents and very accurately. So number one, that's, that's great. But how do we get here and where is it leading us? So let's start with where it's leading us so you can kind of see a final product and what you're gonna get out of things and then the exact process to get there because what you get out of it is very relevant. So here you can see that we have a formula and I want you to take note of this formula. This formula is letting you create a Google Maps link out of the information that you pull from Google Maps. So if you ever run into a scenario where you scrape Google Maps and you don't get the link, this is how you get the exact link to the business. Use this formula, save output is correct, um, and make sure you don't make any changes to that company name that was pulled out of Google or that address. It needs to be the exact one as shown on Google, not normalized, and you'll be left with a link that you can actually go to, see the business, and maybe pull from the reviews. But let's make this quick and snappy, even though we're going into a lot of detail because I tend to ramble. So from there, um, running you through kind of this flow that eventually leads to a final lead list. And now, like I said, I can literally just run another scrape from Serper Dev, run it through this table and output it the other end for my client. And it'll be a campaign ready lead list from there. Um, it's normalizing the name and it runs through to the next key step, which is actually to scrape Google Maps um, and actually scrape specific websites for cents on the dollar. And the way it's doing this is by going to websites like bbb.org, Facebook, and Yelp, and using the name as well as the address, right, the existence of the address, to verify and validate that it's pulling the correct domain from that website because a name is not enough. You need another key variable that is unique to this company. So that lets you fill in the blanks on any missing websites, which there won't be many, but there's like one down here at like number 300. And from there, we're merging those websites. And this is where we make it so we never spend money on leads we already enriched before, because that makes me want to unalive myself in Minecraft. If you're spending money on leads that you already enriched before, you are burning cash. So. Let's never burn cash by uniting all of our local list building in one place. And the way we do this is by normalizing our URLs and then deduping them. So the reason we normalize is because some Google Maps listings will have a franchise and that franchise will be forward slash location slash Las Vegas. And another franchise will be forward slash location slash, I don't know, Chicago. And as a result of that, if you just dedupe on the website before it's normalized, fully normalized, you're going to end up with essentially uh, enriching leads that already exist and you already have and just double enriching them for absolutely no reason. So let's avoid that. We did dupe at the normalized URL level after finding that final website to make sure that we only spend money on a business one time forever. And every time we add new leads, you might be wondering, how do you make sure you're not exporting leads that you already exported before to your campaigns? 
Easy money, brother, because there's a created at date for every single table that you have inside of Clay. You can base your filter off of this creative at, created at date for when you export to make sure you only export new leads. Huge dub, huge dub. From there, where are we doing? Well, we have this great key variable that I don't think you get from other scrapers as well. I know you get like your top 100, but I don't think you're getting them formatted quite as nicely when you use like Outscraper and D7, but this is a great variable. You can see where they rank. You can use that to personalize campaigns. Um, you can see that in certain cases, we don't have four or five. That's because those were deduped out using the previous step to make sure we're not redundant. You can see rating count. You can see a bunch of other key information that you can use to personalize your campaigns. Um, from here, I made a mistake. I forgot to put a formula for the address to only fill in blank addresses. So I probably wasted a dollar here across the entire lead list. Um, and then finally, we're figuring out how many franchises they have because if they have a lot of franchises, we want to look for different job titles than we do for if they have a few franchises. So if you have a franchise-specific offer, you typically, you, you might want to just contact like the general manager of that specific franchise, whereas you may want not want to contact the general managers in general of like a smaller location. Um, and huge tip for you, just local list building tip. Make sure that you, if you're going after a service business, that you actually take the time to input the, uh, the service that they do as a job title. This sounds super counterintuitive, but you're going to find a bunch of founders that literally just put their company name inside of their uh, LinkedIn profile, or they just put their company name inside of, or sorry, the service that they do inside their LinkedIn profile. And then just, you know, retract, you know, uh, how do I say it? exclude another keyword related to that position. For example, HVAC, maybe you put HVAC, you get a bunch of HVAC technicians, remove technician. You're going to get like 500 to a thousand more owners on a small lead list. Uh, of local businesses, a lead list of like 3000. So huge tip for you there just to expand your data. From here, we enrich uh, finding the owner's names, pulling that from their website, from their Facebook. Uh, and then we have, you know, our run on Apollo, the find contacts run in clay was actually super useless. So I won't run that next time. And then we write this to another table where it gets enriched, waterfalled, like in my last video, uh, and turned into contact information and a fully validated lead list that we can launch. So how did we get here? We got here using Serper Dev, like I said, and the beauty of it is that credits never expire. You buy credits once and you get to scrape 8,800 businesses for literally a dollar. I don't know where you're gonna find something cheaper than that. And I don't know where you're gonna find something as accurate or as fast as that. So what do we need in order to scrape? Well, we need to hook the API up to Clay and I can't show you in this video, but I am doing a giveaway where I give away this entire table for free. Uh, and there'll probably be a link down below for you to get the table. So you can just start doing this for your business and I'd be super happy if you did. So you've got your GPS and zoom level. This is the most important factor other than the query, but let's start with the query because in this case, you're going to be able to reduce the inaccuracy that you see from other scrapers like D7. And the reason we get to reduce the inaccuracy, uh, as well as get more granular than D7, as well as clay's native scraper, which did I mentioned is a hundred times cheaper than using clay's native preferred scraper. Oh, and it's faster. Oh, and you're not limited to a thousand businesses. Well, let's find out why. The reason is, is because you can actually search by anything you want, not just keywords, right? Not just, you know, a set list of business types that they decide to choose. And what that means is you're not going to end up with that noise you're typically getting when you put in something like air conditioning, uh, where you get Home Depot or Walmart or other random retail stores. And that's because we're searching by self-classified Google My Business types. It's kind of like if you go to Clutch instead of going to Apollo and you extract all those agencies that self-listed themselves under a category, you're getting what people classify themselves as. So you can actually use it in a campaign accurately without sounding like an idiot. So why is that important? Well, that's important because it means that even if you get noise, because you filter by type and because you're getting type as one of the key things that is output from the API, 
you're actually going to be able to filter by types you don't want as well with your lead list, as opposed to being left in the dark, having to use AI, having to use certain you know websites that you blacklist out of your campaigns. You're going to be able to make sure that you never end up with crappy data, which happens a lot with D7. It's the main problem I had with D7, and I'm sure others can relate to that. So we have our type. Go to this website, go through types, control F it, find the types that you want to search by. Now we need to say where we're going to search. So there's two important variables with where you're going to search. Once we have this, you'll see how you can just slam more types or more locations and just hit, you know, hit the go button and Serper Dev is going to give you thousands more leads in seconds. It's disgusting. So first we need to figure out type. Then we need to figure out location. So how do we figure out locations and how do we figure out, um, zoom level? These are the most important things. So your zoom level is three Z to 21 Z. And this lets you get as granular or as broad as you want with your search. With Serper Dev, I would recommend getting granular because it only allows 20 pages per output, but you also have pagination kind of built in where you can actually go ahead and up the number of pages or down the number of pages. So to get your GPS position and to get your zoom level set, just use 9Z. 9Z is going to be city level. If you want more zoom levels, you can just chat GPT that or Google that. It's super easy to find and it's not worth a lot of explanation, but here's an example of how you get it all formatted to throw into clay. So give me the longitude and latitude codes for, uh, for the top 30 Canadian cities sorted by populations formatted as followed. Um, and then I got the top 30 cities in Canada. Do the same for whatever you want. You can do it by state, you can do it by country, you can do it by whatever you want. You're gonna get all the coordinates that you need in order to pop this in and do searches on any keyword that you want. You take these coordinates, you throw in 9Z at the end, not 11Z. I just put that in there for fun. Um, and you throw that into your clay table. And before you do that, you gotta set up your HTTP Serper Dev. Just go to their, their uh, API logs or just copy the code section in your Serper Dev account to get that set up. It's super easy. It's literally just a couple headers and a body, super straightforward. You won't have to do it. You can just input your own API key if uh, you check out the link below and just steal my table. So from there, we have a run. And in this run, we have our types. So we have yoga studios, gyms, CrossFit gyms, massage studios, fitness centers, boxing gyms. And we could go on forever, basically, up to like 80 rows or 74 rows, I think, in clay. And then we can also go down forever. So if I wanted to do another run, I would just go, hey, uh, Hey, ChatGPT, could you do me a favor? Uh, I would like to have, you know, all these other business types added in at the bottom of this row. Just format that table for me and I would add in at the bottom of this row. Or alternatively, what you can do instead is because I've only scraped page one of all of these businesses, what I can then go and do is I can go edit. I can go edit and I can go page two and I can just click save settings. And then I can go edit column and I can go page two. I can save settings. I can go edit column. I can go page two, save settings, edit column, so on and so forth for all of these columns. And this is taking me what, maybe a minute. And after I do this, the table can be run again and I can get another 3,600 businesses just basically immediately added to that next table. So let's click run. Um, sorry, let's click run 30 cells. And now it's scraping the second page of Google and it's gonna write all those to my row. around 30 cells. And I've just spent about, I don't know, 40 cents. You can see that all of these runs are almost done. It's been like 45 seconds. And now this table is filling up with thousands of new leads. 
for this to take action on, for this to write to new tables, for this to validate, build the Google Maps URL, go through, uh, normalize the first name, find any missing websites. Uh, I probably should have fixed this first, but there goes another dollar to OpenAI. Congratulations, OpenAI. Check the number of locations, maybe score the list based on those number of locations, so on and so forth. Find the founders, find the emails, find contact information, and write to a whole new table where that is waterfalled into ready to go contact information. I'm not gonna show you that table because I have a bunch of tables going through how you get contact information and waterfall it. Um, so I think it's a waste of time for this video. See my previous video if you wanna see that. But basically what this lets you do in simple terms, um, and we'll go back into it here so you can kind of see exactly how you get to the final result is you're just taking your, your run, here we are, just taking your post run to this endpoint and you're running a query string for Q, uh, which is the query, the location, which is over here, including the zoom, zoom level, uh, which my mistake, actually you wanna be at an 11Z zoom level. That's why I thought of it, not 9Z. Uh, this is the city level zoom level. 9Z will be like multiple cities. Uh, it would be like a like the most massive city ever. Um, and then you just change the pages and you can go up to like five pages. So at the first 30 cities, you can probably get like 15,000 um, 15, businesses for like, I don't know, under $2. Uh, and you get all the information that you need, all the information that you could possibly want, um, including their CID, the type that they classify themselves as, the other types, the title, the address, the rating, um, where they rank for this kind of search term. So you can use that in your outreach if you want. Say you're doing like an SEO offer. You've got their phone number. You've got their description. So you could take action on the description to filter your leads even further if you really needed to. You can see their hours of operation. Like, look, this business is only open until 1.15, 12.15. Like they operate super early in the morning, which is interesting. I don't know if you could make a an offer based on that, but you might be able to, excuse me. And... All of that kind of gets spat out the other end into uh, a fully automated table that just easily and quickly dedupes itself. You can see it's deduping to make sure that there's no redundant information in that run right now as we speak. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically the video. If you have any questions, uh, throw them in the comment section below. Um, outside of that, you're just going to need to make sure that you, uh, you input the exact search terms that you want to be running for. I think this is the best way to run the table is to have all the search terms you want, get the first page, get the second page, get the third page, get the fourth page, get the fifth page, so on and so forth. And then from there, take action on the data as you see fit in order to remove the types of things that you don't want from the data, just using filters and formulas. Make sure you get your websites, make sure you check to see if they have multiple locations because that makes a difference for the contacts you pull. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to get the table below uh, by clicking the link. And if you want to get Clay, same thing, get a bunch of free credits by using my link or don't use my link. Doesn't matter to me, but definitely check out Clay, check out Serper Dev. This is the cheapest way I've found and the fastest way to just get a bunch of data shot into my campaigns. Like I was able to make a video and have a new lead list ready to go in 19 minutes. Peace.